Ah, <clears throat> hello and uh, welcome to this brief discussion that I want us to have uh, concerning your essay one, which you are supposed to submit uh, on the 17th of March. That is the electronic copy. Um, there will be a Tenetin link on the course website where you submit the electronic copy which checks if you haven't copied other people's work and all those things. Now, but what I want to do today is to talk about <coughs> the, the content of the essay itself. Now, <coughs> you are required to search an electronic version of an article published from 1 January 2019 up to the present. Now, the article must be a newspaper article. Please don't use journal articles, you will get a zero. Newspaper article or popular financial press. This could in include your um, magazines, business magazines and other things, okay? Please don't use journal articles, I repeat, you will get a zero. You must follow instructions. And these articles must be speaking to any country of your choice. Uh, you only need one article actually, you don't need many of them, just one and then you apply your economic theory to it. Oh, there's something I forgot to change in the question anyway. I will correct that. I wasn't supposed to introduce artificial intelligence and robots here. Um, okay, I made a big mistake. All right, anyway. So, so what you're supposed to do with this article, you are to apply economic theory that you have looked at so far and much of what is required in this question relates to chapter 3 and perhaps chapter 4 which you are starting on Monday okay now here are the things you are required to do you should be able to look at determinants of price changes in that particular article and the effects on equilibrium prices do equilibrium prices rise or fall do they remain the same you should be able to do that using the content that is in your article does equilibrium quantity increase or decrease um, this last part you may or you may not uh, deal with it because you wouldn't have done chapter 4 by then and in many cases the articles that you will be looking at may not speak to these issues okay now now you are to write in an, an essay between 800 and 1000 words uh, so you have to be economic with your with uh, with your explanations you don't have to waffle you must extract relevant information and you must use diagrams to demonstrate that you understand the workings of economic theory and then you read the rest <clears throat> so now what i want to do is to try by all means to speak to this particular issue of price changes and equilibrium prices and equilibrium quantity and so forth using a newspaper article that I got. Now, as you know, there is um, <clears throat> an outbreak of this natural disaster, coronavirus. And in this case, I have an article which talks about the effect of this virus on meat prices. Uh, some meat prices have gone up, others have gone down because of that, okay? So now, uh, <clears throat> the article now says pork prices continue to rise, 
pork prices continue to rise while chicken uh, prices weaken. And this here is the graph illustrating what is actually going on. Let me try to reduce the uh, maybe to 150. So you can see. So this is the pork uh, price that has been rising. And this is um, chicken price. You can see it, is, it has been stable and then it started falling. Now, <clears throat> and this is the trend in the output for pork. It rose slightly, then it started declining and then sharply in 2019 and uh, into 2020. And then you can see also imports. These are imports of pork from overseas. They've been increasing sharply um, from uh, 2019 and 2020, uh, reflecting the need to fill in this gap here in domestic supply. <clears throat> okay. Now let's read the article using those concepts, uh, changes in prices, equilibrium, and other things. Those are the concepts you are using to read the article. It has been a tale of two minutes. The impact of the coronavirus outbreak has sent chicken prices uh, lower, which means chicken prices have fallen, while pork prices have risen. Okay, so these are two things that we are being told. Here we are being told that equilibrium prices for chicken fell while equilibrium prices for pork rose. Now, what are the forces driving those, those dynamics in the prices? Now, we are told now both meats became more expensive in 2019 after the African swine fever, right? A deadly disease affecting pigs. So it was a natural disaster. Do you see that? A deadly disease. That's a natural disaster affecting the supply of pork. Dramatically reducing uh, the country's head and pork. But this year chicken prices have fallen sharply. Now, <clears throat> Here is the problem. The reason why pork prices rose is because of a shock in the production of pork. And this shock was due to a natural disaster, which was a disease outbreak that affected pigs. But now, in, in terms of chicken, prices have fallen sharply, not just falling a little bit, they have fallen sharply. But the reason for their falling is that there is weak demand for restaurant, um, uh, for, for restaurant hangouts and other things that people usually do um, during their leisure time, socializing with their friends, celebrating, for example, the New Year in China. You remember the New Year in China coincided with the outbreak of the coronavirus. And so from the TV, if you are watching news, you see that restaurants were empty and all that stuff. But you see those people running the restaurants, they had already planned for the New Year. They had um, slaughtered their chicken and many other things in preparation for this major surge in demand during the New Year celebrations. And then suddenly another natural disaster, a health crisis broke out and this weakened restaurant demand. So what you see is that pork became more expensive because of something that affected the supply curve. Okay, so here what happened is that there was a reduction in supply. So if I'm thinking in terms of a graph, this is a leftward shift in the supply curve, right? That's what is going to happen. Whereas here, because of weakened demand, you have a reduction in demand, which is an inward shift 
in the demand curve okay do you see that i am thinking with my economic concepts as i read the article and the cause here is a natural disaster affecting consumption right whereas there it was a natural disaster affecting uh, let me just push that up affecting production do you see that so so they are two natural disasters but they are affecting different things one is affecting consumption one is affecting production so the one affecting consumption works its effect through the demand curve the one that affects production works its effect through the supply curve okay so then they say the price drop this price dropping chicken put further pressure on already negative poultry producer margins okay now when you say they are negative produ uh, pop, uh, producer margins they are essentially saying that the price at which they were selling their poultry was less than the marginal cost at which they were producing the chicken essentially that's what is happening so then the the markups the markup the the markups above costs tended to be negative okay now what is happening here is that there is a rest to the bottom that is they are negative price expectations among suppliers so all of them are trying to offload their stocks of chicken before prices even go further down so as they do that at once they there is an oversupply of chicken in the market the result is that it pushes prices even further down 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 to, to to further lower levels that is what is happening in this article okay then here they say but the story for pork is quite different what you see in the story of pork is that government released some reserves last year which obviously had the effect of increasing supply do you see that but temporarily but now after that after those reserves were taken out then prices started to rise very slowly okay but now here is the issue the natural disaster which we said affected demand is also affecting supply in some way it is affecting supply through raising transaction costs of delivering pork to the market because of these lockdowns and blockages and the time wasted when you are being screened and tested for coronavirus infection and all those things it means that where for example you were supposed to take your supply of chicken in one hour to the market it might take you a couple of days so now this is the effect of reducing the the responsiveness of supply okay so that is the elasticity of supply here is nearly approaching zero because of this particular problem which is arising okay this is very interesting okay this is very interesting um uh, so you can continue with all the other things they're talking about people have also started importing pork from outside which means now our total supply of pork which we can call the big q is made up of supply from the domestic market plus supply from foreign markets okay so now the the influx of imports from other countries will have the effect of increasing the supply of pork over time and that will have the effect of reducing the equilibrium price from where it is so now from this information i already have enough 
to do a lot of analysis and demonstration and so forth and so forth okay but now because of time i will not do many things i will illustrate for example in the case of chicken um just just to show you what you might do with this so this is my 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 quantity so this is price this is quantity and uh, this is my demand curve this is my supply curve so this is called the supply curve this is called the demand curve okay um if i were to join these with a line um which we can make a dotted line anyway if you like we can do that let's make it a dotted line so now this is our equilibrium price which is i shall call pe um obviously not port elizabeth um then this is equilibrium quantity which is i shall call qe okay now what what i'm i'm analyzing the chicken case here so what they are saying is we have had a reduction in demand because of the health crisis that is evolving currently now a reduction in demand is a shift in the demand curve so that means at all prices at all prices you have less being demanded so your sub your demand curve shifts inwards like this let's call this point d this curve d1 okay now if you look at this <coughs> if you look at this for example our original price level or price was pe now our new price is this one um to save time i will not make it dotted i will just call it p1 okay so your demand has decreased your demand has decreased now what is going to happen with your demand having decreased at the same price pe people are demanding this here this quantity here the quantity consistent with this point here while suppliers are supplying qe so you see we have a lot of chicken in the market but people are only demanding this much so this has the effect of putting a downward pressure on prices and so what we have is we have moved in this direction now price comes down to this direction and this becomes the equilibrium we are now settling at a lower price level but also notice what is happening our quantity has also decreased you see that we have come to a lower quantity but this is not the only issue from what we read we were told that the quantity of chicken yes also the, the equilibrium quantity of chicken has increased sharply because of negative expectations that suppliers have so what they have done is they have gone ahead to slaughter their chicken to try and beat the market try and sell everything they have before prices fell, fall even further so what they have done is they have caused a huge increase in the supply of chicken in the market okay and so we have something like this um i want my my graph to be clean let me try to put it in a different place and so you have now s1 okay so now what you see is 
we have two forces moving in different directions. We have an increase in the supply of chicken in the market while there is a decrease in demand. So that is the effect of even further causing prices to fall and we end up being at P2. Okay, so now we are at P2. So what you see is that our price started at PE and now it has fallen to all the way to P2. The only thing we are not sure of is whether the quantity we end up having in this market will be closer to QE, bigger than QE, or somewhere below QE because when both supply and demand decrease, we know of a truth that prices will decrease, but we, we actually can't predict what will happen to the equilibrium quantity and so forth. So these are some of the things that you can do with this. You can do the same graph for pork, but it will be it will be different because you were told that because of these blockages, they have reduced the supply response, which means your supply of pork must be a very steep curve which shows that supply is not very responsive and so forth. These are just different things that you can do. There's a lot you can analyze very carefully as you, as you read through the text and so forth. But generally what I've done here is to help you see what is going on. And I've, as I read each paragraph, I was identifying what is happening and showing whether it affects supply or whether it affects demand and you, you can broadly see the factors are isolated here that they all either are determinants of supply or determinants of demand and when they change your demand and supply model changes that is the equilibrium moves to a different position either price goes up or down and quantity might go up or down and so depending on the relative movements of your demand and supply curves. These are the things you will be doing. So then I can easily compose my essay and argue, define all my concepts, then illustrate using a graph what is happening in the story that is before me, and then draw my conclusions and so forth. That's essentially what you should be able to do.